at least one of the Charlo brothers was ringside for Wilder Fury 2. I think it was Jamel, but maybe both of them were there. But anyway, Jamel subsequently came out and said he's not buying the excuses that Deontay Wilder's coming up with for why he lost to Tyson Fury. Because there's a whole laundry list of them at this point. It's completely ridiculous now. I mean, it was ridiculous from the start when he did that interview immediately after the fight. He said, I don't want to make no excuses. And while he was saying, I don't want to make no excuses, he was making excuses. Unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen a fighter come up with so many excuses for why they lost the fight as Deontay when he lost to Tyson Fury. It was crazy. And of course, these were insane excuses. If you didn't know any better, you'd think this guy must have been on LSD. Like every day. I'm not saying he is. I'm saying if I didn't know any better. Because those are the kind of excuses a guy might come up with if he was on some type of psychedelic trip because he's out of touch with reality. Now, one of the latest excuses that Deontay came up with is that Tyson Fury won because of white privilege. I kid you not. Look it up. This is what actually came out of this guy's mouth. Unbelievable. In response to that, Jamel Charlo said, you lost fair and square, basically. I'm paraphrasing, but he said that Tyson Fury won fair and square and race didn't come into it. And of course, it doesn't. See, that's the beauty of boxing. It doesn't matter where you're from, what color you are, what nationality, what type of background, rich, poor, whatever, whatever preconceptions people have about you, you get to prove them wrong in the ring. That's the beauty of boxing. Because people believe certain stereotypes, people have certain ideas in their head about people from here can't fight, people who look this way can't fight. You get to step in the ring and prove those people wrong. That's the beauty of boxing. But somehow, Deontay thinks that, nah, the reason that Tyson Fury beat him from pillar to post was some type of privilege due to the color of his skin. How does that even work? What's this guy talking about? The only way that you can continue to defend Deontay Wilder is if you go down the same road of delusional psychosis. Because there's been certain people who, before Deontay lost to Tyson Fury, they used to get upset with me and say that I was hating on Deontay when I'm saying that he's not the brightest guy and all this business. And after he got beat by Tyson Fury and started coming out with a laundry list of excuses, I've had some of them people come back to me and say, you know what happened, you were right. This guy is a hillbilly. This guy's a hick. This guy's a country bumpkin. This guy's a simpleton. This guy might not even have two brain cells in his head. <laughs> he might not. Because... What type of excuses is he coming out with? This is embarrassing. So anybody with an iota of intelligence and integrity who might have been a Deontay Wilder cheerleader before, after the Tyson Fury rematch, all of a sudden they're falling back. They're like, nah, you know what? You were right all along. This guy's a donut. The only people not doing that are the ones who have gone down that road, <laughs> that bottomless pit, of delusional psychosis with Deontay. It's like a cult. It's crazy. And some of these people who are in that Deontay Wilder cult, the PBC cult, they are crazy. And it's like a cult within a cult now. Because Deontay's now got beef with the Charlos. Or at least one of them. I know at least Jamel. He's got beef with Jamel Charlo. So you've got the PBC cult, and then you've got another cult inside it, which is the Deontay Wilder cult. It's a cult within a cult. And the Deontay Wilder cult at this point is too deep even for the Charlos, the Charlos are like, you know what, we got to fall back because <laughs> cause you guys are just, you're way out there now, way out there. So the latest thing is, Charlo came out and said, nah, race had nothing to do with it. You just lost to the better man on the night and that's what it is. And you got Deontay Wilder and his psychotic fans turning around saying, what do you mean race got nothing to do with it? They're trying to turn it into a thing where they're claiming that Jamel has sold his people out or something. We don't care about his people or he don't support his people. I'm not sure how you get that from him saying race has got nothing to do with you getting beaten up by Tyson Fury. Like literally people, this guy Deontay and his fans will have you scratching your head all day. Their logic is so backwards. They're so demented. Now they're accusing Jamel of being whatever, a coconut and, and all this kind of business basically. When all he was saying is, 
You just got beat by the better man, irrespective of what colour he is. You just got beat by... That's all it is. Yeah? You don't need to bring all the race into it. You just got beat by a guy. For the cult of Wilder, anybody who doesn't co-sign their psychotic fantasies is somehow the enemy. That's where they're at now. That's how far gone they are. If you don't co-sign their psychotic fantasies, you are the enemy. You're some kind of hater or maybe even a self-hater, right? Depending on whether you're a member of PBC or not. That's where we're at with Deontay Wilder and these jokers. So anyway, Deontay also said that Jamel needs a slap. And Jamel responded by saying that he's got, and I, I don't want to mess with the YouTube algorithm here. So I'm just going to say he's got hitters. Right? Those of you out there know what I'm talking about, right? There's some people, probably most of you do, but it might be a few who are scratching their head. What do you mean by hitters? Jamel's saying he's got hitters on deck in case Deontay try to move to him. <laughs> Obviously, that's not going to happen. Nothing's going to happen to Deontay. I doubt Deontay would even try to slap Jamel, to be fair. Um, uh, I think it's all just bravado and nonsense from Deontay, but it is funny. I have to laugh at the beef between Wilder and Jamel. And you know what? In a recent video, I said that, and, and by the way, Errol Spence, unfortunately, is still kind of riding with Deontay Wilder. And he's going down that road of delusional psychosis, <laughs> you know, <laughs> entertaining some of Wilder's psychotic fantasies. But Jamel was sat there ringside and he saw Wilder get beaten from pillar to post. And when you've seen that happen to a guy and you're like a up and coming champion in the game and you're feeling yourself, you look at a guy get beaten the way that Wilder did. And sometimes you're going to lose a bit of respect because you thought he was the best heavyweight in the world, this destructive force. And to see him get dismantled like that, you're like, okay, he wasn't the guy I thought he was. So maybe there was a reduction in respect. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe Jamel looked at me, ah, I don't respect this guy as much. Fair play to him, he tried to fight, but he's just not as good, he's not as dangerous as I thought he was. Yeah? And I think there's a little bit of that that's come into play with Jamel in the way he looks at Wilder, the way he perceives Wilder now. And I think Wilder senses that and he don't like it. So that's why you got this back and forth between these two guys now. Uh, it's hilarious. It's all handbags at 10 paces. I'm sure nothing will come of it. I certainly hope nothing comes of it, right? Because when people will start talking about real serious stuff, you think, you know, hold your horses there. This is just boxing. You don't need to take it that deep. So yeah, I'm sure nothing will come of it. It's all just fun and games. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Deontay Wilder saying that he will slap or that Jamel Charlo needs a slap for saying that color don't come into it. When you're in the ring, whoever's the better man is going to win. Yeah? And if Tyson Fury beat you, what's the color of his skin got to do with it? Deontay talking about he was spiked, talking about the referee had a couple cocktail drinks. If not, he was in on it. Talking about the suit was too heavy. Talking about egg weights in the gloves. I mean, how many excuses does this guy, talking about white privilege, how many excuses does this guy want to come up with, man? Seriously. I'm hoping that he can take all that nonsense out of his head when he fights Tyson Fury for the third time and just concentrate on being a better fighter. Don't concentrate on excuses and officials and who's in your corner and this, that. No, concentrate on be. And when I say who's in the corner, I'm talking about on the night, not being paranoid about somebody spiking your water. You don't need to be thinking about that because that didn't happen the first time. You need to be thinking about becoming a better fighter. Not all these silly excuses. Because if he is thinking about all these silly excuses, then he's going to get an even worse beating than he got first, the second time around. Take all that out of your head. It's all nonsense. Maybe on some level, Deontay knows it's nonsense. Maybe this is all about saving face. Because again, when you've got a very unintelligent person like Deontay, a dangerously low IQ with a colossal ego is a recipe for some bizarre behavior. That's what that is. Dangerously low IQ with colossal ego. And, not only, and remember, he's got a bunch of people around him feeding into that colossal ego. 
So when you get destroyed the way Deontay did in that Tyson Fury rematch, what are you going to do about your image? You were supposed to be this baddest man on the planet. That's how you were selling yourself to everybody. The people are around you, even. Putting yourself up on a pedestal. Acting like you were a, a king and all this business for your people. I mean, that's how Deontay talks when he comes on these videos that he does on social media. He says, your king is back. Your king? Who's king? This guy is a chicken chasing, pig wrestling, dungaree and straw hat wearing, country bumpkin. Which type of king is that? <laughs> Look, he's a dangerous fighter. You know, I've never made a video where I've told you that Deontay Wilder is not a good fighter. He's a good fighter. And he's a dangerous fighter for anybody. But as a person, come on people, it's hard to not mock Deontay Wilder the personality. It's hard not to. Because he just gives you so much ammunition. And he gives you so much reason. This is one of the most disrespectful guys in the game, Deontay Wilder. The way he talks about his rivals and the way he talks about himself, the way he talks about the game. This is one of the most disrespectful guys. So it's hard not to mock him. As country as he is. As delusional as he is. <laughs> it's hard not to. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about the Wilder, Jamel Charlo saga. What on earth Deontay's on? If I didn't know better, I'd think it was LSD. <laughs> Let me know, people. I'm out. Come and join me on Patreon and access my weekly no holds barred censorship-free podcast where we lift the lid on a wide range of controversial topics. It's not mainstream friendly. It's not politically correct. But that's the whole point. We dare to stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. Just head on over to my Patreon page and select the tier called Hatman Hot Topics. You'll gain access to a minimum of two hours of exclusive content every single week, including podcasts, videos, interviews, live stream Q&A sessions, as well as my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. Not to mention a vast back catalog of hundreds of hours of previous episodes. You can listen via the Patreon app, with the option to download in high quality MP3. We've also got a Discord server where you can come and chat and hang out with myself and other members. There's no contract, no commitment, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.